you doing? Good. good. I'm good. Um, let's do it this way. First, let's talk about uh, uh, recruiting first. Uh, if you guys got any questions about the uh, signing date or signing class so far from uh, Wednesday. And then uh, at the end, we'll talk about our new hire. So let's go ahead about uh, recruiting. Throughout the fall, you, you made a lot of mention about roughly 80% of kids sign in December. Uh, this was a very small class for you, right. as, particularly the ones who've signed to this point. Right. What's the anticipation of how many more you expect? Um, I would say that uh, we're about half right now. Um, you know, we, there may or may not be a couple that we haven't announced that are, have some things that they want to do and announce on their own later on. So, you know, it, it's an interesting year. There's, there's um, quite a few guys that are still out there who have not signed. Or, or uh, you know, there's a, a bunch, a couple in state that are notable that haven't signed with anybody, right? So from our standpoint, um, we're, we're still recruiting. Um, I think it's changed a little bit this year. There are more guys out there that are available this year than maybe the last year with 80 percent. So you know, January will be important how we how we finish up and how we continue to recruit because uh, there's still a number of guys that we were recruiting or are recruiting that have not signed. And I don't think we're um, we're alone in 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 that situation. What positions? Do you think are the ones where you really need to target here over the next year? It's the same since we've been here, the front, right? The front, both sides. Um, and, you know, we've got to get more depth. We've got to get uh, more size in, in, in both fronts. And, um, you know, that's been the story since day one. I think we made some steps last year. Um, and thank goodness we did because we needed all those guys offensively and defensively in the defensive front and uh, the offensive line based on injury. So it forced a lot of guys to the field but that were first-year players. And when we're talking about uh, recruiting, we're talking about first-year players. When I say that, I'm not just talking about high school. We're talking about transfers and uh, junior college transfers. Could you tell not having guys on the defensive staff really hurt you in recruiting this year? I don't know about that. Um, I think uh, it would have been a plus. Um, but uh, I think, you know, it, it, the situation is what it, what it was, right? And we knew what that was the last couple, three weeks of the season. So those conversations were ongoing for really the last month. Are there any impact players in this class? And if so, who are they? For this well, we, we hope they all are, right? Um, I say it all the time. You, you know, we sit at, at, this, at this juncture and, and then, and then um, really in February, um, and I always say at the beginning of fall camp, you know, just look around. There's going to be some people in this room or a guy in this room that nobody expects to have an impact on, on the football team. And um, some of those guys have just just gotten here, right? So um, there's guys that, that you think can be special. You hope that they all can. I think we've shown um, in the, in the, since we've been here that a lot of young players play. A lot of first-year players play. The best players play. And so from a recruiting standpoint, you know, these, these guys that, are, that have signed, I think, you know, the, the message has been, hey, come here, um, be developed, and you get an opportunity, a heck of an opportunity to get on the field early um, at a lot of different positions. And, and we've shown that. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping, not being sarcastic, I'm, I hope they all our impact players because, um, you know, we, we, we need that. Do you expect this kicker to come in and compete for the starting spot? We expect spot? every guy that we, we've signed right now to compete for a starting spot. Were you happy with how many kickers you have right now going into next year? Um, with, with signing one, yes. Yeah. Right. Well, what kind of conversation? It's, it's an issue off and on all year, right? And um, we, we've talked about it. It's, it's consistency. But, you know, that being said, he is one of the better kickoff guys in the, in the country. We have covered the least amount of kickoffs than any team in the nation last year. So we're not just going to throw him under the bus. 
Um, he's a talented young man. It's just like anything else I've said before. Um, there's a bunch of guys in this in this room that can go to the driving range and be just fine. Get on the first tee box and things tighten up, then see what happens. And I think that's where he is in life. He's, I mean, he's he was really a really good. He's got a strong leg, and you know that some of that's um, a lot of different things. But uh, the guy's was very very effective for us otherwise last year. What was your message to some of the defensive commits? Um. Well, you know, just that uh, we had the right guy coming in here. I couldn't really say, you know, um, just we we knew what we were looking for uh, schematically, and um, and just trust the just the process, trust us, and trust me, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get the right guy in here that based on the type of defense and and, and um, scheme that that we're looking for, and that they were. They were all good fits for the scheme that uh, we were going to run. What do you like the most about Will Plummer? Um, I like, I'll tell you what's crazy. I, I, I like the fact that when his brother was playing quarterback, he was playing all kinds of positions. He was playing tight end. He was playing linebacker a couple games that I saw. And uh, he is a physical guy that can run and just loves to play. Um, you know, so I think that speaks to his unselfishness. I think it speaks to his toughness. Um, so, you know, we, we, we knew from camps and things like that before he got in the season playing quarterback, you know, his, his high school tape from his junior year, sophomore year, was, was, was him playing a little bit of everything and, uh, and being pretty good at it and, and not shying away from contact. So, you know, he's a, he's a physical guy. Um, he's a smart guy and, and, and loves to play football. That's, uh, that was what really impressed me, you know, before he even got to really start at quarterback. How, how do you envision the quarterback competition uh, looking in spring with the guys you have returning and, and with Will coming in? What, how, what shape is that going to take? I think it's, you know, it, it's, it starts from the beginning. You know, obviously Grant has, uh, uh, has the upper hand because, you know, he's played. He's started in games. He's, he's won games. So, you know, I think it starts there and then, you know, everybody else is, is really in a competition to, to see where they are. Competition's a coach's best friend, but there's no doubt with what Grant has, uh, how much he's played and won uh, in the games that maybe he started. So, um, you know, he's going to start off and, and, and uh, be number one. How important is it for, uh, like, Will Plummer or any quarterback to enroll early? You know, I think, uh, you know, the early enrollees that we've had, most of them, the majority of them have been able to contribute that next year. You know, position like quarterback, it's a huge, huge um, advantage You're just because of the things that go on. Um, everybody, you know, you, you want to talk about the 15 practices. It's more than just that. You know, the, the whole – Strength and conditioning, the, the off-season workouts, the seven-on-sevens that the quarterbacks run. Um, it, it's just, uh, it, it's a, it's a real plus for a quarterback, a young quarterback, to come in, um, and and really get used to uh, the system. Um, you've got meetings with guys. You got two hours a week to really meet with guys. You know, after recruiting, we'll get to that and, and really go through installations. Um, players will, will run some seven on sevens before we get to spring football. So, and the quarterbacks run it. So it's um, it's a it's really a plus for a young guy coming in. It's a quarterback to be an, an uh, early graduate. How did you manage to uh, secure a player from Germany? What was the process that went through? Well, there, there's um, there's actually. Uh, a, I don't know if you can, like say recruiting service, but it's actually we have contacts there. Um, you know, we lost a guy last year. We we had committed. I think people, some people remember that that we lost him to Georgia Tech the last the last weekend. Who was from Germany? So we've got some inroads there. We we kept this guy. So you know, I was I was a little disappointed last year because um, he's a good player that we lost the last weekend. That was so you know. Looks like we may try to have one every year if we can, because they've got some good players and, and uh, 
um, they, they've got, you know, this in particular, you know, he, he, you, you watch him on tape, he's got a, he, a tremendous upside. Um, and when he was here on campus, you know, he's just a great young man, um, really fluid. Um, but can, you know, when he, he gets here and it's strength and conditioning and everything else, there's no telling, um, you know, what, what his ceiling's going to be. So, you know, I kind of like those guys. Do you consider him more a tight end or a wide receiver? Well, he's, uh, for us, he would be a big slot, right? He's a guy that can play uh, outside. He's a guy that we can move inside. He's a guy that we can play a little H back with right now. And that's just him walking through the door. So, you know, I, I wouldn't categorize him just yet as at one position or another because he's got the ability to um, to play outside. And the, the junior college uh, player, it, it, could you see him as, as he more of just uh, a straight tight end? He's a tight end. Yeah. He's a tight end. He's, uh, you know, 6'4", 240. Um, I think you see on tape that uh, – He's used to being a tight end. He loves the block. He's he's an excellent blocker, and uh, you know we we need that. Um, you know because we really his body type. We have only one with with Bryce Wilma. Um, we'd love to be able to utilize the tight end a lot more. You know it's, it's it was tough for Bryce because if we lose lost him, it'd have been tough for anything. So um, you know I I think. He's going to give us some depth there and maybe the ability to get in some two tight end sets. And, you know, you see him on tape. When you throw it to him, he makes him – he can – he'll go get it. So, you know, the, the thing that impressed us was his blocking and his size and his quickness. And um, But obviously he's, a, he's a, a, a pretty good athlete the way he's – the way he uh, goes after the ball on tape. How important was it to land or hold off – um, competitors for a guy like Reagan Terry, who's an in-state. Yeah, I, you know he's the he's the Jordan Morgan of this year so far, right? Um, he is, uh, you know, a, a national recruit, really, and um, that we evaluated early. You know, had on campus early, um, and then here comes everybody at the end, right? So, and we hung on again with with a guy that's right up the road. So, yeah. Uh, it's it's extremely important, and it's just like anything else, you know. You, you and we say it. I say it in here all the time. You guys kind of laugh. It's you know, it's our evaluation that matters. And you know, some of these guys that we evaluate um, at the end, here comes everybody else to to recruit them. And you know, in this case, I think uh, relationships mattered, and uh, uh, I know they did. And so you know. It, it uh, it, it's it's good. He's he's happy. Mama's happy. So, and we're happy because we need D lineman, right? What are your thoughts about him as a player? Oh, yeah, we've we've thought about it early. You know, we you know what our thoughts are because we offered him really early. You know, and, and um, you know, I was I was at his game. So you know, it's it's hard to get everywhere, but obviously our thoughts are pretty high. On a bye week for me to be there to watch him play. How confident are you that um, the guys who verbally committed but didn't sign the other day ultimately will sign? You got to have, you have to be confident, right? So you got to keep recruiting. And and let me just say this: we're not the only school that that's that's happened with this year, right? So you've got some people out there, more people than just us that have verbal commitments that didn't sign last week. So, you know, we, you've got to be confident and you've got to keep recruiting. It may or may not happen, but uh, like I said, you know, we're not the only, we're not the only people in that boat. I think uh, every Arizona football coach has been asked this, but from your perspective, why is it difficult to keep the top guys in state within Arizona? Um, you know, I don't know. It's, uh, it, it, the other piece is I've been on both sides of it, right? Um, so, um, I know what's, what has been said from the other side. And as somebody told me, it's, it's not negative recruiting if, if it's true. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, that's kind of where it is. I think, you know, we, we've worked at it. Um, you know, we went to, in between December and, and January, we were in over a hundred 
high schools in this state. And we started right here. So it's not that we aren't working at it. It's not that uh, you know, we don't have a, a lot of guys here that, have, uh, that we're visiting. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, it's, it's a process, too. Um, so, you know, it, it's something that we, we're working and have been working very hard at. And, and, you know, that's the only way I know how to do it. Our, our new guy might help us, too, since he snatched a couple of them out of here. It might. <laughs> Would you say that it is imperative to add more players to this class, or could you go into training camp with the roster that we have? No, we're, we're going to add more play, players. I can just put it that way. I don't know if it's imperative, but I know for a fact we're going to add more players. Does the transfer portal kind of change things with how you approach them? You have a certain amount of room, but there's transfers. Yes. I think... You know, it wasn't well thought out at the at the beginning. Um, the combination for uh, it, it, for everybody, the combination of um, the early signing date time, right, the middle of, of December, and the transfer portal, which most guys get into right after the season, really roughly the first week in December, right after Thanksgiving, right, their last football game. So. You know, it, it's a challenge for roster management because of the fluctuation of the numbers. And I don't think that was thought about. But, you know, there are two separate schools, of, I mean, two separate rules. But they work hand in hand for coaches who, who are trying to manage a roster because it's pretty hard uh, to, to have your numbers of what you, you want to do, what you, what you need, and two weeks before, um, the early signing date, things change on you, right? And then all of a sudden, other guys become available, and they're looking for places to go by, by really January. So that's an ongoing process. And the, and the tough part right now is, you know, for us today, um, you know, the dead the dead period started really, you know, this week. So. Everybody's out. The other part is most universities like ours close today. So when you're trying to get a guy in school, you know, it becomes a difficult situation because you can't visit, he, you can't go off campus and see him. Um, you can't bring him on campus. And then transcript evaluation and getting guys in, it's a mad scramble in January. So those conversations you have with, with prospects are still going to go on. But, um, unless you've had them on campus or they know a little bit about the campus or have been there or know you, it's a matter of trust at that point, you know, for guys that are going to transfer. Any more recruiting questions for Coach? Um, do you anticipate any more stock changes or anything besides the hiring? Of Not right now. No. Okay. Um, uh, I guess we released it a little bit earlier than, than the press conference. He, he still hasn't been on a – he didn't know where to go. He asked if these were the meeting rooms running. He still hasn't been, <laughs> been through the whole building. So we got some stuff to do. But uh, um, it's a, a man, not just a coach, but a man that uh, uh, has tremendous integrity, has a lot of experience, um, has been around this game. Um, I've competed against him in, at, at different places. And, you know, I, I think the biggest thing that, that he brings to the table is everybody that, that, that I know is, is um, a tenacity, a, a defense that's going to play hard, that's going to be um, aligned correctly and, and, and teach and, and fundamentally sound. Um, and those are things that we talked about um, you guys, if you want to get into schemes and everything else like that, you can you can ask him. Um, but I, I couldn't be happier that uh, Paul Rhodes has decided to join us here and uh, as our defensive coordinator, and um, his family, his wife's out right now looking with the realtor. He's got his two boys with him here today. So, Paul, come on up. You guys can clap for him. You're in the wrong room for that. Let me just start by thanking Kevin for, for this opportunity and, and to let you all know that I'm thrilled to be here. I came, I came here for the first time 
in the early 90s as a secondary coach at, at the University of the Pacific, who no longer plays football. We played, a, uh, we played a great football game against a very good football team that night, 16-13. We lost. Game was delayed by lightning. They came in and asked us uh, at, at, during the delay if, if we wanted to take the check and, and go home. They were a very physical team, and, and we, we, we got ourselves beat in pretty good. One of the veteran coaches says, yeah, you got to take that check. Let's go. I was, uh, I was young and naive, and I said, heck no, we're, we're, we're staying and fighting. We're playing this game. But that, that night that I was here and experienced the atmosphere, experienced the University of Arizona, experienced the Tucson community, I knew this was a place someday that I'd like to have the opportunity to coach. And with that said, I'm excited to be joining Kevin's staff. He and I have known each other for a long time, competing against each other, as he said, recruiting against each other and so forth, and uh, thrilled about the opportunity to be here and lead this defense. When did uh, Arizona or when did Kevin reach out to you? Um, we, we, we've been in conversations here for, for the past week or so. You know, uh, th those details are, are, are unimportant, but we've, we've been uh, conversing here for the last week. Were you actively looking for a defensive coordinator position somewhere? I, I was not actively looking in the fact that I was uh, calling people and, and uh, expressing interest in, in, in that regard. Um, I, I describe it this way. I, I had a personal itch uh, to coordinate again, and, and it needed scratching. And, and when the opportunities started to present themselves, uh, this, this is one I was immediately very excited about. Uh, have you had an opportunity yet to examine Arizona's returning personnel or anything? Uh, not to that extent. I mean, obviously, we played here uh, this fall, and, and, and preparation went into that. Our preparation was on the other side of the ball. So I, I, don't, I probably have better knowledge of the offensive personnel than I do the defensive personnel at this point. But that will be something we'll, we'll, we'll dig into uh, very quickly and very aggressively. What would you say are your main um, tenets or philosophies that you will promote? Yeah, uh, first thing you got to do is you got to tackle great, and and I think tackling is taught. I, I think not only do you uh, you teach it, but but you rep it and you rep it in in the in the proper ways. Player safety is a, is a high concern to me, so we're going to teach our kids how to take care of themselves, how to protect themselves, but how to get offensive players on the ground. I I don't think. Uh, overall, it's taught like it like it was in the past, and and that will be priority number one to to teach. Um, we're we're going to play hard. We're we're, we're going to fly around the field, and and uh, we're going to play with uh, a fanatical effort that that uh, Arizona fans will, will be proud of. We're we're going to get lined up properly, as 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 coach said. We're going to be fundamentally and technically sound. And if you've noticed, I haven't mentioned one thing about scheme or or coverage or fronts. Um, they will actually be secondary to those to those things I just mentioned. With that being said, what scheme? <laughs> yeah, well, we'll, we'll, I'll put it this: we're going to play zone, we're going to uh, pressure, and we'll play low man. Uh, how's how's that? Uh, um, We'll, 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 we'll be multiple as far as front goes. Um, you'll see us in, in a three-man front. You'll see us in a four-man front. But as the question was posed about the personnel, we've got to figure that out a little bit too. You've you got to put your players in the best positions, the best situations to be successful. And that will go a long ways and determine final scheme and, and how much of certain things that we do. Coach a position group as well? Yeah, not finalized yet um, because we have other pieces to, to fill in. Um, but, but there's a good chance that, that I'll coordinate from the linebacker position. I think that's the most connected to both the front and the back end and, and most connected then to the run in the pass game because of it. How much autonomy has Kevin given you as far as filling out the rest of the defensive staff? We're, we're going to talk about that. We're going to discuss that yet today as, as a matter of fact. <laughs> you uh, you handled a lot of Arizona in your recruiting at, at UCLA. Yeah, the, the first year uh, I had the entire state. Uh, we've since broken it up and, and added uh, another coach in, in the state. But yeah, I, I I love recruiting down here. I came down here to finish up uh, recruiting Kenny Churchwell uh, two years ago, and and. <laughs> After I was down here, I, I told our director of player personnel, I says, if, if you don't have anybody assigned, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take Arizona. 
Um, next thing I knew, I had I had a lot of schools, both in, in California and Arizona, so we, we added some help down here. Uh, but I've developed a good relationship with the coaches in the state and, and uh, looking forward to continuing to do that. Two questions. How much has it changed in the 20 or so years this state as far as the recruiting landscape? Yeah, I, I think I think it has changed greatly. I, I think there's a lot of players in this state. I think there's probably a, a fair number of overlooked players in this state. I think the state of Arizona is playing better high school football, and I think that shows in the, in the number of players that are that are signing out of the state. Two questions. Um, first, uh, that's a challenge for me. I'll, 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 I'll try to stay with you. Well, you have plenty experience. Uh, when you saw Arizona struggle defensively. Last year, what was your assessment of that situation? And also, number two, uh, is Coach Cecil still going to be on the staff? I don't know if that's for you or Coach Cecil. Yeah, that, that's, that's a question uh, uh, for Coach. You know, ev everybody struggles at, at, at some point or another. Uh, um, and it's on both sides of the ball. We, we were struggling ourselves uh, defensively, and we went in spurts. We played good, and then we played poorly. Uh, certainly something that I wasn't concerned with at, at the time was, was what was going on uh, here with, with those numbers and that staff. But uh, now it is uh, our priority and, and, and something we'll attack and address. How will your past experiences at other places you've been help you to get the most out of the players? Well, I... I <laughs> I think that's something that, that, that I do, quite honestly, is, is, is get the best out of kids to get the best out of coaches. And I think both of those are, are my responsibility, responsibility on the defensive side of the ball. I think, I think young men got to gain confidence. Okay? They gain confidence through, through knowledge. They gain knowledge through being taught. And, and uh, it'll be a staff full of great teachers. Our, our kids will know what the expectations are and what it is that they're supposed to do. And, and with that in mind, I, th I think they'll go out and, and attack their duties with, with great success. Um, obviously, mo the, most of the players aren't here anymore. Or they're about to leave or go home for the holidays or they're gone. So how will you um, communicate with the, the returning guys? How, how will that whole process play out? One, one, one guy at a time. One guy at a time, and, and uh, I, I'm sure uh, I probably won't speak to every one of them before they get on campus, but um, we'll start with that. We'll start with introductions, and, and uh, you know, little will be done over the phone, um, but very much excited and looking forward to when they get back on campus and, and we get a room full and we get a room full of eyes and, and uh, get to start that process on, on a thorough basis. Anything else for Coach Rhodes? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, man. Looking forward to meeting you all. Thank you. Thank you.